guess uh, for both of you guys, um, we just talked to Coach Holtman about you know sort of the last week for you guys and also in college basketball. And I just wonder, he said he's sort of reemphasized to you guys a little bit, like you know, not that it was a worry, but keep make sure that things are above board. I just wonder how that message has been delivered to you guys in the last week in the wake of what's kind of gone on in college basketball. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you grab a mic. Um, you, you mean, Adam, you mean the message from Coach Holman? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we received uh, the night this went down. It was pretty. It was pretty uh, direct. A uh, pretty straightforward text message to our staff from Coach, and uh, he reiterated his expectations for us as coaches. Not that he had any sort of uh, doubt or worry, but just think probably it was more than anything. It was a good time to. Um, you know, for him to reiterate that to us, and um, you know, it's. I said this to my wife a couple nights ago. It's a blessing, from our perspective as assistant coaches, um, because you. It's like this in any organization. You become a product of your leader, and for us, it's a real comforting feeling knowing that we're working for a guy that values doing things the right way. And not only that, but uh, that's the expectation here within our program. So. Um, you know, there's no there's no blurred lines with that. We can sleep uh, and rest easy. I, I feel like, uh, comparatively speaking, to what is going on around the country, and uh, it's another reason that you know we, we feel blessed to be able to you know Terry and I, and Mike, and our whole staff. I speak for them and saying we're, we're blessed to be able to work for a guy like Coach Holman. And what is it like when you see guys that are in your profession? I'm sure guys that you've crossed paths with that are going through federal investigations to this point. What is it like for you guys as a staff to look around and, and see this going on? Uh, obviously, we, are, we, know where, we know everybody in the profession, sitting next to guys, uh, watching games. You feel sorry for them, um, uh, but at the same time, I mean, like, there's, there's nothing we can do about it. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, all I do is try to worry about what <coughs> I can do, do things the right way. I've been blessed to be at Butler, now I'm at all, the Ohio State University, and, and, and we don't have to do those things. And I don't have to worry about it. And like Coach Peden said, we work for a great guy. Uh, and that's going to do things the right way. And uh, I sleep easy. Um, Coach Holtman said that he was excited about the leadership of this team. That's been something that the last few seasons has been off a little bit. Either the best leaders were guys who weren't ready to contribute on the court or the, the guys who were on the court, weren't the best leaders, you know, just the, the formula seemed a little bit off. He said he was excited. I'm wondering if you are too, and if so, why? Sure. Uh, I, I, that's a great question. I think, you know, the reason we're so excited about the leadership on this team is because of the character of the guys that we have in that locker room. And, um, you know, we, we, we don't have the fortune of knowing uh, what happened last year or the year before. And quite frankly, um, we don't give a damn. It doesn't really matter. So. Uh, what we're concerned with is what we have here and now in front of us, and we know that we have a, a locker room full of guys that want to run through a wall for Ohio State and for the Buckeye basketball program and for the guys that played here before us and uh, you know, players, coaches, alumni, and, and that's, that's, that's what has us most excited. And I think there's, there's endless possibilities when you have a, a purity um, from a leadership standpoint and from a you know, from a, a character standpoint, uh, within your locker room, it gives you it gives you a lot of a lot of hope moving forward. What I will say is this too: I think uh, what we're most excited about is uh, the long-term <coughs> view of that, and this is something that you know, Terry can speak on this better than I can. I was at Butler for two years. Terry was there for what, 11 years, 12 years, and uh, you know, one thing that uh, was very obvious when I got to Butler my first year was uh, that leadership was built in. And uh, seniors graduated, but by the time they graduated, they had passed on the values and the traits uh, that are necessary to not only uh, you know, win in college basketball, but win at a high level and win how we wanted to win. So um, I think that's probably what we're most excited about beyond this year is uh, that, that possibility of, we call it regenerative leadership, where it's a, it's a leadership that's built into your program that just regenerates itself year after year after year after year. And, you know, to say uh, that they haven't had that in the last few years, it, it, it may be true. Uh, we can't really speak on that, but um, we just know that we're excited about, about this team.
Terry, since you volunteered, you, how is leadership taught in the conference? Uh, like I said, from the seniors. And uh, the young guys behind them do not want to let the guys down that, that passed it on. And, and it made it a lot easier as, on us as coaches as well. Didn't have to coach as hard sometimes because uh, the players coached themselves. Chris uh, was talking to us about the idea that sort of everybody maybe had a feeling that the dam was going to break in recruiting and for you guys to get four in a very short period of time. Um, how did it happen? How did, how did all the work you guys put in turn out that way that you were able to have a week like that? And I'm sure that's, that's not a week that very many coaches have in their careers. All it really took was one. Took one, just the right guy to do it, and then everybody else just kind of follow suit. Uh, the kids, they know each other. They play together all the time at AAU. They talk, they hang out, and they know who they think is good players and who they don't think is good players. And with, like all the guys, they want to play around with good players and be at great programs. And if we're able to get guys to campus, we have a great shot. And then as we bring in good players here, they just keep, they just come, come falling. And the kid from, can't say his name, but the kid from Texas started it off, and they just all, they just fell through. It, it, is how much is pitching opportunity that you know? Hey, this is a this is a a big time program that's down at the moment right now. Is that a selling point that you go out and try to use as one of the positives here? Yeah, it, it, you know, with all due respect, uh, we don't view ourselves as being down right now. And uh, you know, I feel I, I do feel like there's a great opportunity here um, at Ohio State based on numbers numbers alone. And we've got. Uh, We've got guys in that locker room that we believe in, and we think, you know, we're planning on having a hell of a year. And and the opportunity beyond this season uh, was very obvious, and that was, you know, made it, uh, you know, made it uh, appealing uh, from a recruit standpoint, a recruiting standpoint, because we were able to sell opportunity um, at a high level just based on numbers alone. Uh, we never guarantee anything in recruiting. We never make any kind of promises. Uh, that's not how we. That's not how we're built, but uh, the opportunity to come in and compete uh, for major playing time as a freshman, I think that's any, any freshman across the country that would tell you that's, a, that's what they're looking for. And there, there is an element of cult within our culture today of uh, instant gratification. And, you know, that's, that's something that we were, you know, we felt confident about that, you know, we can, we can provide an opportunity uh, to compete early on. They're, they're probably not going to have to play behind uh, you know, three or four seniors or three or four extra juniors. Um, there's a there's a gaping hole. So uh, we're we're uh, you know certainly aware of that uh, with our recruiting process, and it was it was sort of it was part of our vision. Terry, you're talking about seniors, and I'm just curious. Talking with JT, kid is a fourth year, still junior status, and then Cam. They're guys who careers really haven't gone maybe the way that they envisioned it when they first came to Columbus. But now they're also trying to start a culture for you guys. So I'm just wondering, as coaches, maybe how you kind of strike a balance between understanding that they're trying to go out on a positive note, but also creating that culture that you guys want to start here in your first year. Well, first off, we want them to go out on a positive note. We're here for them. Uh, and we're going to bring our positive energy and excitement and passion. And uh, one thing that they've been doing, they've been listening to us. Uh, and they're accepting everything we say. And, and that's been great. And uh, and I, I, I've become, become loving those guys like like one of my boys. Uh, obviously at Butler, I was there a long time, so I knew every guy. I only got to know these guys for a few months now. Uh, and like Coach said, the leadership we've been excited about. But having those guys listening to us and wanting to, wanting to succeed at a high level for the university, uh, it's been great. And uh, we just want to make sure they go off on a great note. And this is for either of you, but have you guys been able to get in to and the gym and work with these guys as much as maybe you would like, given the late start you guys had on 2018 recruiting class. Personally, for me, not as much as I would like to, um, but but we're it's about to get started here, starting today, and then uh, pursuing more more time with them starting on Saturday, and uh, I think that that's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and, and we tell them all the time, guys, we apologize. We wish we could be around you more, but they also understand we have to get out and recruit as well. We heard Coach said that, you know, you know, two weeks ago you guys didn't have a commitment in the 2018 class. Now you have as many as you have. He said he was never concerned. Where were, where does that come from? Because you know, not having any recruits two weeks ago to having four, it just seems like that's 
that's a huge jump. And obviously, you guys have been with him before. Where does that confidence come from that, hey, we're going to get these guys. It's just going to take time. He, he's a, I'll give you a quick story. I was in a, a high school gym this week uh, talking, to a, talking to a coach. And I said, uh, we were kind of talking about the last few weeks, how it's materialized here. And um, I mean, I, I would love to tell you like that, you know, we weren't, uh, you know, grinding. You, you don't know, like you don't know in recruiting. You don't, you don't know until it happens. And, um, you know, we were confident uh, with, with a handful and a core of guys, uh, but you don't know. And uh, Coach Holtman, uh, we were on a recruiting trip. He said to me, he said, hey, he said, um, and I thought it was something like maybe personally I, I probably needed at that time. He said, listen, he said, we all have to, uh, we, we can't succumb to pressure. You know, he said part of any time you take over a job, um, especially the magnitude of this, uh, you have to be built to handle adversity. And certainly uh, we've had some adversities uh, and we'll continue to have adversities as we build this program to be what, you know, we envision it being. Uh, but, you know, you have to keep perspective. And that's if there's one thing uh, our boss does very well is he keeps perspective. He never gets too high. He never gets too low. And he, he is very, we say this all the time, we're a values-based basketball program and we are process-driven. And he believes in that. And we all do. We all believe in that. But he says uh, to me, he said, hey, we just got to continue to put great days together. The results will come. And I think that's, part, when we talk about process, that's, that's what we mean is we, if we stack great days upon each other over and over and over, and you're doing the right things, and you're doing them the right way, we have a, an unyielding belief that great things will happen. And that's, that's just that's how, we, that's how we choose to, to live our daily lives within our program. And that's, those are the things that we preach, teach, coach, and emphasize with our players every day. Okay, a couple more. Um, Ryan, um, how was, when and how was the uh, decision made to uh, open up with an exhibition game against Worcester? Um, that's a good question. I begged my boss to play Worcester. <laughs> and uh, when I knew that uh, he, we really didn't have an, any idea, any sort of idea. Um, and uh, Worcester is very, uh, it's a special place. It's a really special place. And I know the head coach, uh, Steve Moore, is a legendary coach, number two all time in Division Three wins. Uh, in the history of college basketball. He is an unbelievable coach. And, um, you know, when we started talking about it, we were throwing a couple of other schools' names around. And I said, Coach, I said, listen, I don't do this uh, very often. You've known me a long time. I don't, I don't think I've done this ever. But I would beg you to play Worcester. And he, and I, you know, I, t I told him about Coach Moore and what it would mean to the school. And, and to, to Coach Holtman's credit, um, he said, let's do it, you know. And, Quite frankly, that was that was that was it. Um, but I, I we obviously give all credit to Coach Moore for for doing that. Um, he doesn't know Coach Moore. Coach Holman doesn't. But um, I'll, I'll I know that they'll meet, and I'm going to tell them a lot about him because Co Coach Moore is very special to me, and um, it's it's a, I know it'll be a great opportunity for a small school. And then for you, as you know, being a Worcester grad and um, having played under Steve Moore. You know, what is it like to be able to, to have that opportunity to sort of host him in your uh, first game as an assistant coach at Ohio State? Yeah, it's, it's special. It's really special. But we'll be out to kick his ass that night. <laughs> Just kidding, coach. <laughs> It'll be very special. Hard to follow that one. Um, when I talked to Micah yesterday, he talked about some of the work you guys put in this summer, and he talked a lot about changing his body. And I wonder, just even since you guys got here, how you've seen him adapt to that, and, and what kind of player you think we might see when he's heavier but leaner than we saw last year? Uh, with all our guys, we are we want them uh, a lot leaner because uh, we're going to play fast. And there's not much anything slow about us that we do. And we told the guys we're going to be aggressive, uh, play fast and play free, and then enjoy it. Uh, if they don't enjoy it, you'll probably hear yelling at them because we want them to have fun and play free, uh, and that's the way Coach Holman likes it. Like Micah talked about being, you know, having to go up against guys like Isaac Haas and some of the big guys in the Big Ten that he said last year he kind of got pushed around a little bit. Does, is it the way you've seen him change his body, how should that prepare him better 
for a Big Ten schedule and for the grind that is ahead of him when you really only have two bigs? Uh, really, the strength is not really as much uh, when we worry about with our bigs, more as the fundamental techniques. Um, they're strong enough. They're plenty strong enough. And yes, Haas is a big fella. Uh, we, we face Haas, and we had guys not the size of him and handle Haas pretty well. But it's always going to be about your technique. And then it's not one guy that's going to do it either. Those four other guys on the court are going to have to help as well. Coach Holtman talked about um, the players coming over, the team coming over every weekend and whatnot. And it was good for the, uh, the players to be around all the coaches' kids. I'm just wondering, how much does this sort of thing help the team? And what's it been like for your kids? And do they have any favorite players? <laughs> it's, it's great. Uh, we, we want the guys around us as much as possible because we want them to know us on and off the floor. Uh, and we're, we're pretty much the same. I'm yelling at home all the time with three boys. Uh, <laughs> and they have a lot of energy, and I do not know where they get it from. Uh, but our guys know when, when we step on the court. Uh, but we want they're going to see us at our, I mean, at our weakest point. We're going to see them at their weakest point uh, because we're, we're going to be true to them. Um, so, and, that, and that's earned trust, too. And our, our boys, I don't, my boys, I don't know who their favorite is just yet. My one problem I may have this year is when we go to Portland, and if we play Butler or we see them, my boy's probably going to run to one of those players because that's what they know. That's what they've been around. But hopefully they, they find one before we get there. Thanks, Colin. Thanks, guys.